So the next part of the 373 is to ensure that we do a physical check of the machine itself and also the ancillaries. So the first part of this is just to check the whole machine for dirt and damage. So do a complete inspection of the eave itself and including underneath. We're then gonna go close to the machine and actually ensure that we have an MDSS in date sticker. We're going to ensure that our asset number is correct and matches our documentation and also our ancillaries. We're then going to ensure that we have checked the HEPA filter and the coarse filter and that that matches our documentation and it's in date for servicing, i.e. it has been changed within the last year. We're then going to go to inspect the batteries. We have an internal battery which is fixed and the external battery we're going to ensure that, that is correctly seated and check that it's fully charged. The last thing we're going to do is check that our oxygen sensor, which is here, is still in place and is securely fitted. So the next part of this is to check the oxygen hosing itself. First of all, we're going to inspect the hosing and ensure that there is no dirt or damage to the hose itself. The second part is to check that it has been checked itself by MDSS. This should be done every four years. This one hasn't ha have a check sticker on it, purely due to the fact it's brand new out of the box. But once this has expired after four years, this will need an MDSS check and then it will have a sticker placed onto it. The last component of this is just to do a physical check of the non-interchangeable screw thread and the Schrader valve itself, which ensure that there's no damage to these. So the next part of this test is to conduct the functions test. The first part of this is to ensure that it's plugged into a power supply. We know this is plugged in because the light denoting the power supply has turned fully green. We also know that both the internal, the top light, and the external, the bottom light, are more than 75% charged as both col are coloured green. At this stage, we need to attach our test circuit to ensure that the, the machine can go through its complete self-test. And in this circumstance, we're going to use a single limb circuit to attach to the machine. The last part of this test is just to ensure that you have a cap over the end of the, the circuit itself to ensure it can pass its self-test. Once you've connected the circuit and have the cap on the end, turn the machine on, and at this stage it will run through its 70 second uh, self-test itself, just leave the machine to complete this um, and watch the screen to ensure it has completed it successfully. So next we're going to check the external battery. We need to remove the battery by clipping the two buttons together, removing the battery, and then checking on the front of the machine that the external battery icon has disappeared. Once we've checked that, we're going to reinsert the battery, ensuring that it clips in properly. And at this stage, we'll be checking on the front of the machine to ensure that the battery icon has reappeared. At this stage, we need to ensure that the, the EBTR is in the correct oxygen configuration. And that determines how we're delivering oxygen, whether we deliver high pressure oxygen from an oxygen cylinder using our oxygen hosing, or we're delivering low pressure oxygen through our oxygen low pressure adapter. And this will be when we're using either our oxygen concentrator or a cylinder with some bubble tubing attached. At this stage, what we need to do is ensure that this is set up correctly. So what we'll do is we'll click on the settings button, which is the, the cogs. We'll then click up setup. We we'll put in the code, which is 1968. Click next. We'll then go to the top left where it says oxygen configuration. And at this stage, we need to ensure if both of these are deselected, we will use the high pressure oxygen. If you want to use the oxygen concentrator, you'll use low pressure oxygen, you'll tick it, LPO, and you'll tick oxygen 93 when using the concentrator. If you're using low pressure oxygen via a cylinder on just some bubble tubing, 
oxygen 93 should be off. In a standard setting, both of these will be deselected because we'll, in routine practice, use high pressure oxygen. Once you've confirmed that both are deselected, cross out, cross out again, cross out again, so you're back to the home screen. So once we've checked the oxygen configuration, we're then going to attach our test lung to the ventilator. And at this point, we'll press the adult quick start button. So press once until it flashes green and press again at this stage to confirm start ventilation. We're then gonna check our settings are correct. So we should have pressure control, control mandatory ventilation and it should have pressure regulated volume control selected at this stage. We should be delivering a tidal volume of 500. We should have a frequency of 12 and we should have a peep of zero. Next, we're going to check the external power supply. We will disconnect the device from the external power supply. At this stage, we should get a blue alarm which says power supply with a question and an obviously audible alarm we then reinsert the power and the alarm should disappear. We will then do a disconnection check, take the test lung and remove it. And at this stage, we should get a red alarm which says disconnection with an obvious audible alarm and you'll see a highlighted red alarm at the top on the bar. When we then reconnect, after a few seconds, that should then dis disappear. So we'll next check the alarm low oxygen pressure. So for this, we will select the FiO2, turn it to 40, click to confirm. And at this stage, we should get a low oxygen pressure, but we might have to wait up to 30 seconds for this to occur. Again, you'll get an audible alarm and a yellow light across the top handle. At this stage, Keep the FiO2 at 40%. And then we're going to go to setup. 1968, click next. Go to oxygen configuration and change to oxygen 93 and LPO and ensure both are selected. Click out of these and wait at least 30 seconds. We're now in low pressure oxygen mode. And so you'll see a slightly different alarm, but it will say FiO2 low. Turn the FiO2 to 21, click confirm, and this alarm will disappear. We then need to go back into settings, set up, put our code in again, click next, and put it back to its default settings of both auction 93 and LPO deselected. Come out of that menu, and that test is complete. So next we're just gonna do a high pressure alarm check. We're going to click on alarms, look at the pressure airway, turn it down to its minimum setting, click confirm, and you'll get a red airway pressure high alarm on with again, a red alarm across the handle. Once this is complete, pre-select the upper airway limit back up to 40, which is its default setting, and that test is complete. So once those tests are complete, we're gonna put it in standby mode. It's gonna press and hold the power button until the blue menu appears. This will say standby, confirm or cancel. We'll click confirm. We're now in standby mode. We're just gonna check the pediatric mode. So we'll press the pediatric fast start button, press and hold until it flashes green and then press and hold to confirm. At this stage, we need to check that our settings are correct. So we should have a pressure controlled, controlled mandatory ventilation, this time without PRVC selected. We should check our values. So we should have a inspiratory pressure of 15. We should have a frequency of 20 and a peep of five. Once we've confirmed those settings, again, put it back in standby mode. 
So press and hold the power button until the blue alarm co menu comes up. Click confirm and it's back in standby mode. At this stage, the 373 is therefore, therefore complete and now we're going to press the power off button to turn the machine off. So that is the end of the 373 video for the EVE TR. This video is to be used in conjunction with the other training uh, videos for the EVE TR related to functional use of the machine itself. Just to remember that we should use the checklist when conducting the 373 to ensure all checks have been done correctly um, through this process.